has been phenomenal. When we were putting it together with Vicky Tellis, who isn't here today, with Tuli, who's in the room as well, we thought about how do we create in society bold, real leadership? How do we put substance to what is called meaningful youth engagement? And during the program, I appreciated the honesty. I appreciated the criticism. I love that you were all taking on each other, and that was fantastic. This program is about how will we uproot gender equality, gender inequality, actually, and how will we push for better sexual and reproductive health across Eastern and Southern Africa. But we shouldn't stop there. We should say across the world. They have spanned all the way from South Sudan, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania. We are Africa. Kuko, we are actually the African Union, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I've appreciated all of you. Today is what we're calling an Oscar evening. Yesterday, I was so impressed. Some of my favorite moments were seeing how creative young people can be. Perry Kent, who's in the room, was throwing water on his face, and I was confused, what, what is Perry Kent doing? And he says he's putting tears. He was like, I need more water for tears. <laughs> so we'll see Perry Kent in the movie. But what we're seeing tonight is excellence. We're seeing brilliance. We're seeing out of the box thinkers, which each and every one of you are. But also, if you know me, you know I'm a troublemaker. And I can't say that all is good in the world. We have to be cynical sometimes. Looking at young people today, and I'm a young person myself, maybe an elder compared to some of you, but we go to a conference, we meet a policymaker, and we take a selfie. Then we lose honesty and authenticity because we go onto Facebook and Twitter and say, I engage Ban Ki Moon. No, you took a selfie with Ban Ki Moon. Let's be honest. That was your opportunity as young people to engage Ban Ki-moon, to tell him something, to push him so he'll contact you, but all you ask for is a selfie. We must get a selfie, it's important, don't get me wrong. But we must also say, what are we engaging this person about? When we open the program for conference applications, we see thousands of emails coming in. But after the conference, if we ask a young person to write a report, to carry out some advocacy, some activism, there's literally no one to be found in this desert. So what I would hope is that when we pass the baton on to you, it's that post-conference period that is important. What happens after the conference? What is your advocacy? What is your strategy? And that's what we all need to be. We need to be out of the box thinkers. Then only will this world change, or it will never change. We ourselves must define the substance of meaningful youth engagement. Youth quake means an earthquake. We want to shift things. We want to be planet shakers. We want to not barely break down Africa, but we want to break down the walls of gender inequality. That's what we want. So I have planted the seeds. We have planted the seeds. It is up to you to make those seeds grow. And I'm proud to stand here today and say that the reason I'm leaving you for these seeds to grow is that within this, this fantastic organization, I've already been promoted to a managerial post. So I celebrate with each of you as we try to change adolescent healthcare we continue to work together, but it is a sad moment for me. And I would not be here today without my team. I would not be here without John, and if you could stand up your energy, your passion. And John is from Malawi, he also teaches me Chechewa. I went to a rural village in uh, Malawi, and I was like, Achinya Mata Ichonde Youth Hub. And that means join our youth hub. <laughs> Thank you for being my teacher and a great friend. 
When I think of Lindley, Lindley, where are you? Lindley, you're a bold young woman, also from Malawi. You're humble, and that's what I love the most about you. Every leader must have that. When I think of Millicent, Millicent, who's our MC, she's got that sassiness, that personality, that oomph, that will just bring about change, I think, just by being herself. When I think about Raymond, and Raymond, I want to clap myself for you. Because Raymond is my right-hand man. He's the person who makes things happen. And before I left, I gave him this book, and I'm sorry to use this language, but he says, getting shit done. And Raymond does that. So thank you, Raymond. Ruva, who couldn't be in the room, is an excellent engager with policies. Hoitsi, who's in New York right now, delivers beyond expectations. And then we turn, turn to the team in Zambia. We have Perry Kent in the room. Perry Kent? <laughs> Perry Kent is only 20 years old, but he's written the most brilliant communications policy I've ever seen in my life. And your acting Perry Kent is on another level. <laughs> I mean, you, you watch it tonight. I, I don't want to, to say anything more than the tears. Um, Akende. For those of you who watch Black Panther, Akende looks like she's from the movie. I started calling her Wakanda this week. Like, I'm so freaked out that she looks just like she's from Black Panther. <laughs> Akende, you opened up to us this week about what happened to you, and I want to appreciate that. I always knew there was a bold leader behind the scenes. You made me cry the night before, or the night after you spoke when I went to sleep. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for your triumph and your struggle and being that woman that, that's so successful. I thank you. <laughs> Finally, my team in South Africa. Tsepo, I know, I, I give you sleepless nights. Our director actually ended up calling me the Iron Lady. <laughs> I quite like that though. Um, but Tsepo, I know I give you sleepless nights, but I'm proud of you. When you presented to your donors, your donors were impressed, and you're going to take Y Plus so, so much forward. Um, so thank you for what you're doing with young people in the organization. Honey, who's standing in the room? Honey? She may not be a honey. Honey is going through a very difficult time in her life at the moment. She is so ill, but she still comes to work and she's like, Shakira's work is not going to get done if I don't sleep or if I stay away and sleep at home. So honey, without you and your support, nothing would be possible. I'm sorry that I took a little longer than I was supposed to, but I think it's always in leadership important to know the people who are behind the scenes. Christina, who is in this room at the moment, and Christina wants you to stand up. Often in our lives, we don't appreciate the people who book our flights, who stay up, make sure everything is perfect, and Christina is that person. Bertha and his team, 756, you have outdone yourself this evening. Completely and throughout the entire time I've been at set. So I thank you, but my lasting words are, and you, you know I've been saying this all week, please don't be boring. You are young, what can you bring to the table? Be revolutionary, be big, be bold. If you're not, we'll be sitting in the same space by the time I'm 40 years old. So let us really change the terrain. I thank you, enjoy the evening and be blown away by the most beautiful young voices on the African continent. Thank you.
about throwing the lifeline to the next generation to make sure they're going to have access to sexual reproductive health rights. Thank you so much. I'm going to, I'm like Shakira, I'm, unfortunately, I, I think if there was a place like rehab where I could go and somebody just closes me in and forces me to use social media. I've just completely failed. I think it also comes with the age, but I think uh, I, start, I, need, I need to be like Gertrude. I need just to be flipping my phone and uh, saying what I need to say. Uh, I'm gonna briefly just talk about issues of the role of uh, young people in advocacy. And sexual reproductive, reproductive health rights is an object that affects young people. And we can no longer turn a blind eye especially that we know that young people are sexually active. I think with this realization, the set new strategy for 2018 to 24 focuses on gender transformative SRHR systems. And one of the program interventions is hashtag the next generation. And this is why SAT set up the youth hubs. I'm also fairly new at SAT. I joined last year in November, and I just couldn't understand what these youth hubs were about. And I said to Shakira, I'm totally confused. What is SAT trying to do? And it took me almost two months to be satisfied that SAT is trying to do something. And what we expect to see, this is why we've had this vibrant leadership training this week. We need to see strengthened leadership of adolescent girls and young women. Why do we need the young people? We need young people to speak for themselves and to get people to listen to what they are saying. Shakira said it's not about taking a selfie okay, with policymakers. It's about speaking about your issues and getting those policy makers to listen to you. Advocacy may lead to a challenge to the way SRHR services are provided. And Africa's young people are the primary vehicle for realizing that demographic dividend. The Agenda 2063, it focuses uh, it focuses on the vision that Africa, African children and youth will fully be engaged in the talent pipeline. Um, just to let you know who I am, um, I'm a medical doctor. My main job is to fix kidneys. And that's why I was doing it very well. And one day suddenly I woke up and I don't know what happened to me. And I joined UCT and I started doing an MBA. And I completed an MBA. And then I joined higher education sector. And when these vice chancellors used to talk to me, they used to never take me seriously. They used to tell me, hey, you are a doctor, you know, a medical doctor. And 
you know, the real doctor is the one who can, with a PhD. So I just want to inform you, I've completed my PhD also now. <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a doctor doctor in, in that sense. You know? <laughs> and, and to be honest, such human beings can only be married to a psychiatrist. <laughs> so I am married to a psychiatrist. I also want to inform all of you that she's giving me right pills. I am, I'm living, surviving nicely. <laughs> So, so colleagues, thank you, thank you, Shakira, for inviting me, and and this is beautiful. In fact, uh, I'm gonna go two steps forward to say, uh, I'm gonna put this to all universities and colleges. This videos that you put, and that's gonna be done. And it's gonna be done as soon as you send me. You know, it's, it's gonna be distributed. It's gonna be on the website in ETAs, and um, to make sure, I promise you that all 26 universities in South Africa will view this. Some of you. My, my job is um, looking after 2.2 million young South Africans who are in higher education sector. Um, this is a sector of 26 public universities and TVET colleges. And I see ch children from 15, I call them children because for me they're still children at the age of 15, you might call them adolescents. And in TVET colleges in South Africa, you can come in at the age of 15 when you are grade 8 past. But in universities, you have to join when you're 17 and 18, because that's the age group when you start universities. My, one of the reasons of coming this was to learn a lot from SAT, um, because I'm encountering a huge problem. I have a huge, massive problem. I've got 32% of my young girls, or our young girls in higher education, who become pregnant um, while they are in studies. And 75% of them are unplanned pregnancies, and you just saw it. And that's a reality. Everybody think higher education is UCT or a WITS, you know, or a University of Pretoria. But in reality, that's not even 12% of my entire population. My reality of higher education is, I've got 27.8% of people, students, coming from households with no food and shelter in TVET colleges. I've got another 44% add-on. They might have food and shelter, but they might not have basic amenities, including like a sanitary pad. That's total 74% of the population. And then I've got another 20% or 22% population that might have basic amenities like food and shelter, or might have um, uh, sanitary pads, but they don't have basic stuff for education, like buying a book, having a network or a mobile or a cell phone. And just the 4.4 percent of the population actually enjoys this. And suddenly, in a university environment, you put that 4.4 percent of the people with that 96 percent of the people. What happens? There's a want. There's a desire. When you go to universities and to TVET colleges, you actually find it's the unbound freedom. You're out of your household. You know, you're in a residence or you're staying with somewhere. That's where prostitution, transactional sex comes up. Got 14% transactional sex happening within universities and colleges. And that troubles us every day. Um, not only because I'm concerned with HIV, I'm concerned with many factors. Who am I in reality? I am, my, I am nothing but a return on investment of my own minister. And they see me as a return on investment. Why? Because I want to put a clarity of things. The real alumnus. You probably are from one university or a school or a college. You're an alumni of that high school. You're an alumni of that university. You're an alumni of the TVET college. But the real alumni is not the numbers. For me, if a vice chancellor comes and tells me, well, I have produced 3,000 graduates and I've got 20 PhDs and we all clap in the graduation ceremony, that's not what I'm happy with. And that's not what minister of higher education is happy with or a president of this country is happy with. The aim is those 3,000 that were graduated, can they live for next 40, 50 years of their life and work?
Give me a 